Hello, my name is Asia Bihasovna. I am teacher from Dermatovenerology course. I am glad to see you at the first lecture of Infection Diseases of the Skin. Today we will speak with you from the most common type of uh, skin infection, which you can see uh, at the practice like a general physician or dermatovenerology doctor. Yes, today we will discuss with you about bacterial infection of skin. In some book you can see uh, other name of this group of diseases like pyodermas. Pyodermas, pyodermis. So, please look at the uh, at the name of this group of diseases, pio. Uh, from Latin language, pio always mean pus. Dermas or dermis mean skin. From the definition of these um, diseases, you can understand that in each of these uh, situations, you will see pus formation at the skin of your or at the body of your patient. Now, what about epidemiology? I hope everybody of you know that epidemiology uh, means the spreading of disease in different countries, nationalities, gender, age, and etc. So, uh, by epidemiology of uh, pyodermas, we can tell that this group of diseases you can see from everywhere and uh, in everyone. It means that it doesn't matter which nationality you have, uh, Russian person, Kazakh person, Indian person or Pakistan person, all of us can, ha uh, can have equal chances to have this type of bacterial infection of the skin. Doesn't matter gender, it means that equal men and women can have this type of disorder. Uh, and also we can tell that in some age, person uh, more often have this type of diseases. So, a uh, few words about etiology. I hope everybody of you remember that etiology means cause of disease. So, as you understand uh, by the name of group of diseases, bacterial infection of the skin, it means that the main cause of these diseases will be some type of bacteria. And uh, more common type of bacteria, which everybody of you know, will be Staphylococcus bacteria and Streptococcus bacteria. And sometimes it can be combination of these uh, bacteria in one wound. So in this situation, we will tell that this is mix infection. What we can tell about pathogenesis of bacterial infection of the skin? I tried to find for you the most simplest pathogenesis, which consists three main steps. So, first step, it is condition of microorganism. What does mean microorganism? Microorganism, it is bacteria. So, it means that uh, everybody of you know that in uh, all of us, in healthy persons uh, on their body, present non-pathogenic Staphylococcus bacteria and non-pathogenic Streptococcus bacteria. But at the situation when uh, immune function of our skin decline, uh, barrier function of our skin decline, in this situation, these bacteria can start their pathological growth and start to produce their toxins and enzymes, which uh, can uh, provocate the beginning of disease. So it means that condition for bacteria play first role in the pathogenesis of pyodermis. So non-pathogenic bacteria, pathogenic bacteria. Second step, it is condition of macroorganism. Who is a macroorganism? Macroorganism, it is person. Yes, so a uh, person, uh, it is you and me, and our condition also play a role here. It means that uh, today, for example, me and you healthy, everything is fine with us, but in some situation, if you have decline of your immune system or have another, uh, another problem uh, like a different type of uh, endocrine diseases, for example, diabetes mellitus, yes, so uh, it gives more chances for bacteria to grow in our skin. So that's why our condition also play a big role in this situation. And last step, it is different exogenic factors. What does it mean exogenic factors? First exogenic factor, it is your profession. For example, yes, we work like a doctor. We sit at the clean room, we use the different tools. And what about person who work at the street or person who work uh, with coal, for example? Yes, so this person have more chances to have bacterial infection of the skin. Uh, the next exogenic factor can be a different type of microtrauma. So what does it mean microtrauma? For example, now I will took the um, list of paper. 
Yes, and for example, do like this. I count my finger. So, and in this place, I will have the small, small micro trauma. I will forget about this micro trauma after one or two minutes, but this micro trauma stay in my finger. Yes, and it will be like an open gauge for different type of bacteria. Uh, or in some situations, we can tell about uh, exogenic factors, which we call uh, maturation. What does it mean maturation? Maturation, it is uh, rednesses and moistness of the skin fold uh, at the person with obesity, for example. Or maybe uh, if everybody of you see the small babies who took pampers and, uh, for example, mom forget to took these pampers from her baby, yes, at the evening time when she will took it, she will see in the anogenital skin skin uh, folders, some small rednesses and moistness. So it means that this maturation uh, also can be like an exogenic factor uh, for uh, bacterial infection of the skin. Now, if these three steps will plus to each other, yes, um, for example, uh, you have or you ill, you have some viral infection, viral disease, yes, in your immune system go down, barrier fun function of the skin also decline. Uh, in this situation, bacteria start uh, herpatological growth. Uh, bacteria start to produce her toxin and enzymes. And first of all, uh, the uh, process will affect it or touch the region where you have small microtrauma, for example. So uh, if this three step plus, uh, it means that you have or can have the chances uh, have this group of diseases. Next information should be about classification of bacterial infection of the skin. Uh, all uh, of these diseases divide for three main, um, or uh, all of these group of diseases have uh, three main classification. So first classification, uh, we divide for primary bacterial infection and secondary bacterial infection. What does it mean primary bacterial infection? Primary bacterial infection is a situation when uh, the, uh, these diseases will be like a lone disease. It means that your patient will tell that everything was, was fine with me. I have, my, uh, I have clean body, yes, I have clean skin, but after some time I see the pus formation in this region. Yes, so it means that in this situation we speak about primary bacterial infection because uh, it took uh, non-changed skin. And in some situations, uh, your patient can have another skin disorders, for example, eczema or psoriasis or uh, pemphigus. Yes, and uh, for this group of diseases, for these diseases can plus bacterial infection. In this situation, you will tell about secondary bacterial infection of the skin. And in this situation, we will call these diseases like microbe eczema or uh, psoriasis vulgaris, for example. So... Uh, in this situation, uh, bacterial infection plus for disease which present on your patient. Today we will speak with you only about uh, primary type of bacterial infection. The second classification will be from the uh, deepest of process under the skin of patient. It means that all type of bacterial infection can be superficial and can be deep. So what does it mean superficial? Superficial when pathological process will located only in epidermis region and don't go deeper. Deep uh, bacterial infection mean that pathological process took epidermis, dermis and subcutaneous fat even. So, uh, in deep type of infection, you always will see ulcer, like a secondary lesion, and then scar. So, it means that if you see at the body of your patient some small, uh, good rounded scar, you can understand that uh, this pathological process was deep. So, and last uh, but main classification for us uh, will be biobacteria which provocate this disease. It means that uh, all uh, biodermis divide for Staphylococcus bacteria infection and Streptococcus bacteria infection, or uh, as I tell you, for mix infection. First of all, uh, we will uh, or I will I must tell you uh, or must ask you. Uh, uh, about one situation. For example, uh, if you will check your patient or if you will work like a general physician or dermatology doctor and you will check one patient who come for you, yes, uh, how you think 
in your opinion, yes, uh, by visual examination without any laboratory test, can you identify only by your eye uh, this is Staphylococcus uh, bacterius infection or Streptococcus bacterius infection? I will give you one minute to think about this question. So, in your opinion, how you think by visual uh, examination of doctor, can you uh, decide that this is Staphylococcus bacterius infection or Streptococcus infe infection without any laboratory test? Okay, so uh, some of you uh, tell that yes, yes, we can do it. Somebody of you tell no, we can't do it. Of course, uh, if you will work like a general physician or doctor at a big hospital where you will have uh, different tools which will help to you to put the diagnosis, of course, you must do some laboratory uh, tests to prove uh, the type of bacteria. But for example, if you work in the small village and uh, at the hospital where you don't have a big laboratory or even x-ray examination or other tools to prove or to help you, uh, yes, uh, in this situation you can use only your eye. So how you should do it? At the beginning of the lecture I tell that uh, Staphylococcus um, non-pathogenic staphylococcus bacteria live in our or present in our body in each of healthy person body yes so and uh, these staphylococcus uh, bacteria uh, mostly located at the places where we have hair follicle so uh, streptococcus bacteria mostly uh, non-pathogenic streptococcus bacteria mostly we located at the places where we have more smooth skin so, it's, uh, so that's why you can understand that if pus formation will located at the place where patient have hair follicles, yes, head uh, on the in the man it can be mustache or beer region, yes. Um, so uh, if you see pus formation in the place where present hair follicles, you can decide that this is Staphylococcus bacterius infection. So because it's a normal situation, uh, if bacteria start uh, the, her pathological uh, production of toxins and enzymes at the place where she uh, located, yes. So and if you see uh, the pus formation at the smooth skin of patient, yes, you can decide that maybe it is a streptococcus type of bacterial infection. Next, uh, who of us have uh, more uh, hairs in uh, the body? So, uh, of course, more hairs on their body have uh, our men, yes? So, because they have uh, the hair follicles on uh, their face region, yes, uh, there are some men, especially men who have the great level, level of testosterone, they have, have hairs on their chest region, from their backside, on their hands and legs also. So, it means that by epidemiology, staphylococcus type of bacterial infection, mostly you can see at men. And uh, more smooth skin, yes, uh, skin without uh, many hair follicles have our children. So it means that by epidemiology, children more common can have streptococcus type of bacteria, bacterial infection. So uh, at the first lecture, uh, we uh, speak with you about skin supplements or skin appendixes, yes. So and we tell that uh, our hair is the skin uh, appendix which located uh, from uh, subcutaneous uh, subcutaneous fat, uh, dermis and epidermis, yes. So it means that uh, mostly all type of staphylococcus infection will be deep, deep because hair follicle go or took all layers of our skin. That's why pathological process will be deeper, yes. And if we will tell, tell about uh, Streptococcus infection, yes. So uh, we tell that uh, they mostly will locate at the smooth skin. They don't go uh, deeper. Mostly they will locate at, at the epidermis uh, region. That's why uh, this type of infection mostly uh, will be superficial. And about contagious. 
Of course, uh, processes which, lo which will locate it more superficial will be more contagious than uh, other type of uh, bacterial infection. That's why if, for example, your baby have uh, streptococcus bacterial infection, yes, you mustn't send him for kindergarten. Because if you will do it after two days, uh, all um, babies who are present in this kindergarten will have the same problem. So that's why you should try to remember this information. And uh, if your baby will have some type uh, of streptococcus infection, yes, you should uh, remember that he should sit at home to the treatment. And only after that, you can send him for um, kindergarten or school or etc. Okay, I hope this part of lecture was understandable for you. Now, uh, we should discuss with you diseases, which you can see in this big group of disorder. Uh, of course, we tell that uh, some of our patients can have Staphylococcus bacterius infection, some of the patients can have Streptococcus bacterius infection. But in real situation, you can't put it, uh, the name of uh, this group uh, for medical card uh, or medical history for your patient, yes? Because of course, uh, uh, for all of these um, uh, diagnoses need a laboratory test which will prove uh, that these bacteria or these bacteria present at the pass of uh, your patient. So that's why we have some specific diseases which you can put like a diagnosis for patient in their medical history. Uh, first of all, we will discuss with you streptococcus bacterial infection, streptococcus group. So, uh, we tell that streptococcus bacterial infection mostly will be superficial, but sometimes they also can be deep. So, first of all, uh, if we will take with you streptococcus bacterial uh, streptococcus superficial bacterial infection, we will speak with you about impetigo. So, impetigo, it is a name of disease. Uh, if you are uh, students of four course, especially I tell it for foreign students, yes, who will uh, finish our university and at the end uh, of their education will uh, return to home. If it will be especially uh, Indian uh, students, yes, uh, everybody of you know that they will pass their MCI uh, examination. So, and my, I must tell that Impetiga, one of the lovely uh, diseases which a uh, person who prepare questions for MCI uh, put for their questionnaires. So it means that uh, if uh, in these questionnaires will present some questions uh, about uh, skin disorders, yes, impetiga will be one uh, of them. Uh, so what does mean impetiga? Uh, from Latin language, impetiga mean inf or translate like infantigo. Uh, infant, child. Uh, by this uh, thing, you can understand that uh, mostly by epidemiology, this type of infection you will see in our children. So, infantigo in children, impetigo in children. So, uh, impetigo, it is a type of streptococcus bacterial infection which have a uh, lovely location. The lovely location uh, for impetigo will be baby face, especially nose and mouth triangle. So, uh, and um, in this situation, uh, primary lesion for patient always will be pustula. Pustula. Uh, sometimes in some book you can, uh, you can find uh, another name of primary lesion for uh, this group, uh, this uh, disease. Uh, it will call like flicten. So, what does mean flictan? Flictan, it's also some type of pustula, but if, for example, uh, pustula, uh, it is lesion uh, which have the small sizes, yes, size less than one centimeter, will be, will elevate it on the, uh, the skin, yes. Uh, flictana uh, is, um, uh, have the big sizes, yes, uh, this pustula can have uh, peripheral growth, and uh, it will be not so um, 
so big elevated under the skin. It uh, will be more superficial pustula. But it will be not mistake if in some situation you will tell that primary lesion for patient with impetigo pustula or flectana because uh, both of them mean some uh, lesion which will contain the pus. Okay, when this pustula will wrap and pus go away, yes, you will see the small good rounded erosion. This is a secondary lesion for impetigo patient. Uh, when pus go away, yes, you will see this red colorish erosion. After two or three minutes, this pus start to be dry and you will see yellow colorish crust at the patient face. So in some situation, you should remember that this yellow colorish crust which uh, we located at the face of baby will be like uh, keywords for you if you will pass uh, some MCI question, uh, MCI examination or a different type of uh, another exam. So because um, these signs are like yellow uh, honey colorish crust at the face uh, should, be for, should be for you like a, a red colorish words so or, or key words which will help you quickly find the diagnosis uh, of this type of the patient but uh, if we tell about impetigo and we tell that this is a superficial type of bacterial infection yes so you should understand that pathological changes located only in epidermis region that's why if we will treat patient with this skin disorder yes after two or three months everything will be fine with him it means that these erosions uh, and crust will go away and in the skin of the patient you can see only some uh, hyper or hyperpigmentation yes uh, but uh, our epidermis can regenerate. Uh, I tell this information in our first lecture. Yes, uh, that's why after some time, um, skin again, epidermis regenerate, this hyper hyperpigmentation also will go away and skin of patient again will be clean and normal. So this is all main information about uh, impetiga. So in uh, this side uh, of me, you can see the picture of a uh, patient with this skin disorder and information which I tell for you now. So the second uh, disease, which also present in uh, Streptococcus uh, bacterial group, uh, will be deep type of infection and we call it ectima. So uh, what does it mean ectima? Ectima, it is also bacterial disorder, which mostly you can see in more adult person, not in the children, yes. It will took more adult person, more adult uh, men or women. So, so uh, ectima also have the lovely location. Mostly this type of pathological process will locate it at the near part of our leg in Thai region, yes. Uh, primary lesion for ectima will be nodule. I hope everybody of you remember uh, the characteristic for nodule, which we discussed with you in the first lecture. Nodule is a solid type of primary lesion, which uh, have the big sizes, uh, more than two or equal than two centimeter. It's elevated under the skin, always palpable. Uh, and when nodule wrap, in this situation, secondary lesion always will be ulcer because nodule uh, grow from the mm, deep layers of our skin. It took always dermis and epidermis. Even uh, subcutaneous fat sometimes also go, go for pathological process. So one no when nodule wrap, secondary lesion will be deep ulcer. After some time, when you evacuate all pus and put the specific bandages with antibiotic drugs, yes, uh, in place where present this ulcer, you will see scar. So it means that secondary lesion for patient with ectima always will be ulcer than scar. So this is two diseases from Streptococcus bacteria group, which more often you can see in your practice. Of course, we can ha we have another type of diseases, another type of diagnosis, but uh, they are rare. Uh, you can find, uh, but they you will see rare in your practice. I hope so. That's why it's a topic for our another lecture. Okay. Now we should discuss with you Staphylococcus group of bacterial infection. This group of diseases also will divide for two groups, superficial 
when pathological process were located in the epidermis region and deep epidermis, dermis and even subcutaneous fat. So, if we will take Staphylococcus superficial type of bacterial infection there, you can see two diseases. First of them we will call osteofolliculitis, second psychosis. Deep type of Staphylococcus infection, it is furuncul, or in some book you can find the second name of the disease like boil, carbuncle and hydrodenitis. Uh, how do the differential diagnosis between all of these diseases? So, first of all, we should look for osteofolliculitis disease. So, uh, what does mean osteofolliculitis? I always try to learn my students uh, translate or give the definition of uh, the word, only look for the name of problem. So, look please, osteo folliculitis, yes, uh, two part of this word. What does mean osteo? Osteo always mean upper part of the hair follicle, folliculitis, hair follicle. So, we tell that uh, Staphylococcus bacterius infection mostly you will see at the places where we have hair follicles, yes? So, that's why I will draw for you hair so, this is epidermis, this is dermis, and this is subcutaneous fat. So, this is root of our hair, this is kernel of hair, and this is our hair follicle. So, it means that when we tell uh, about osteofolliculitis pro problem, it means that pathological process located in this place, in this region of epidermis. So, it means that Staphylococcus bacteria start her grow in this region, produce toxins and enzymes, and in this situation, in this region, you see pus formation in this place. So, osteo, it is upper part of hair follicle which located in epidermis region. Folliculitis, hair follicle. So, this place go for pathological process. Okay, so primary lesion for osteofolliculitis always will be pustula. I remember for you, yes? What does mean pustula? Pustula, it is small, less than one centimeter or equal for one centimeter. Elevated lesion, palpable, which go for fluid or exudative uh, group of primary lesions because uh, pustula always will contain yellow colorish pus. Yes, so fluid is not clean. Fluid have yellow color or pus. So this is pustula. Uh, prime, uh, secondary lesion for patient with osteofolliculitis can be erosion and uh, then yellow colorish dry crust. So, it means that when this pustula will wrap, yes, you will see red colorish erosion, erosion after two or three minutes when serum start to be, uh, when pus start to be dry, you will see yellow colorish crust in this region. After some time, for example, after two or three months, yes, in this place, uh, this place will be clean without any uh, signs of disease, yes, because you see that process located in epidermis place, process is superficial. So, um, you see that I draw kernel here. So, it means that in osteofolliculitis condition, uh, the type of pustula will be uh, like this. It means that at the center of this pustula, you also will see hair kernel. Osteofolliculitis in real situation don't have the lovely location. It means that this pathological process can locate it in each part of your body. Yes, it can locate it in your head region, it can locate it in your chest or backside region, so in all parts of the body where present or, uh, or uh, patient have hair follicles. So, it means that if you see uh, on your, in your patient small elevated lesion with pus at the center of which will present hair kernel, your diagnosis for this patient should be osteofolliculitis. From this part you can see the picture of patient uh, with osteofolliculitis or you can see the picture of this type of lesion. The second name 
which also will leave a superficial uh, staphylococcus group, we call psychosis. Psychosis. In some book, uh, some authors also can call this disease like barber disease. Why? I will understood later. Uh, so, psychosis or barber disease changes between osteofolliculitis and psychosis. In real situation, both of these diseases don't have any changes. Uh, it means that in psychosis condition also, you will see a small elevated pustula at the center of which will present hair kernel. Process also will touch only upper part of patient epidermis. Yes, so main changes between two of these diseases only by localization because psychosis will locate it at the beer and mustach region of man. So it means that this small elevated pustula at the center of which will present kernel should locate it at the patient mustach or beer region. So differences only between uh, localization of pathological process. It means that if this lesion you will identify in different parts of the patient body, yes, you will call disease osteofolliculitis. But if you will see the same problem at the beer or mustache region of the man, you will call disease psychosis or barber disease. So uh, why barber disease? Yes, uh, because um, previous or many time ago when uh, all person live at the small villages, yes, and in these small villages they have only one person, one barber, yes, uh, mostly it was one man, who cut the beards and hairs from the old man who live in this village. And uh, you know that uh, many years or ago the persons or people don't know about any sterilization of their tools and etc. So that's why uh, this person who worked like a barber in this village cut the beer region uh, of the man with big knife. And what he do after procedure with this knife? He do it something like this. So he put it for his apron without any sterilization. So and uh, cut the beer region from the first man, then from the second man, then from the third man. And after some time, all men who live in this village see the pus formation on uh, their beer region. So after that, this disease have the second name, barber disease or uh, you can call it like psychosis. So changes only between localization of process. Here also I want to show you the picture of one of our patients. He agreed to give for us this picture uh, to video lecture. Yes, we take uh, a prescription for him, from him. So and uh, look please for two pictures. This picture uh, before treatment and you see that many type of pustulas uh, present on his beer region, yes. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the same patient after uh, one week treatment. Yes, so you see that after treatment, everything fine with this patient, all lesion go away. So it proof for us that process was superficial and located only in epidermis place because this patient don't have any scars on his face. So, this is main changes uh, from osteofolliculitis and psychosis. The next type or the next group of staphylococcus bacterial infection, it is deep, uh, deep diseases. So, for this group we tell the furuncle, carbuncle and hydrodenitis. So, uh, first of all we should discuss with you furuncle. Yes, and uh, again I will draw for you hair follicle. So, because also pathological process mostly will locate it at the place where present hair follicle. So, in furuncle situation, pathological process will be in epidermis, dermis, and even sometimes touch the subcutaneous fat. So, what does mean furuncle or what does mean boil? Uh, so, it means that uh, in this type of diseases, pathological process will take not upper part, not upper part, yes, of uh, the hair follicle. No, in this situation pathological process will be bigger. It will transmit from the one hair follicle, took all hair follicle and patient root, and, uh, and hair root, sorry, yes, and uh, also um, pathological inflammation will take uh, the tissues which will be surround of this hair follicle. It means that hair follicle, root of the hair, uh, 
tissues which lead around of the hair follicle. All of this region will go for pathological process. In each of these parts, you will see inflammation. That's why if we tell that furuncle is deep type of staphylococcus infection, primary lesion in this situation will be nodule. Yes, so primary lesion for furuncle always will be nodule. Yes, look please uh, for um, changes uh, from the pustula and nodule. You see, yes, the first changes uh, from the sizes. It means that we tell that pustula is very small lesion and nodule uh, is very big lesion. It means that it can uh, took or it can be uh, more than or equal than two centimeter by the sizes. Nodule elevated under the skin, palpable, have a good rounds. It means that you always see this nodule. So, but when this nodule wrap, wrap, pass go away, yes, in this place you will see deep ulcer because process was deep. After some time, uh, in this place, when you will evacuate all pus, you will see the scar. It means that result of all deep type infections always will be secondary lesion like scar. Scar because process was deep and connective tissues, yes, uh, go for pathological process also. So, furuncle also a uh, type of disease where we don't have the uh, lovely localization. It means that furuncle you can find in each part of the patient body. It can locate it on patient face. Uh, it can locate it in our leg or hand, backside, so buttocks even. So, it doesn't matter. Uh, boil don't have specific location. If for pathological process go only one hair follicle, uh, for example, you will call disease furuncle. But if you will see two, three, or five uh, big nodules in different parts of the patient body, for example, one will present in face, one will present in uh, leg, one will present in hand. So in this situation, you will call this disease furunculosis. Many furuncles, uh, many boils present at the body of the patient. So, if one only, of course, furuncle. So, what also you should remember in this situation? You should remember that uh, deep type of staphylococcus infection in many situations you should treat uh, with combination of doctors. In many situations, uh, it is even not a dermatology doctor. It should be surgery doctor because uh, process is deep and it means that surgery doctor always should do the cut in this region, maybe uh, evacuate the pus, yes, and put uh, drainage and then sterile bandage for this region, especially if furuncle will located at the face region of the uh, patient, because uh, the main complication and very dangerous complication after furuncle on the face can be sepsis. So that's why if you see this picture, you should quicker send your patient for, or first of all, for surgery doctor, even not for dermatology. Okay, next disease, which also will be in this group, we will call carbuncle. Carbuncle. So, um, what does mean carbuncle? How we can do differential diagnosis between these two diseases? Carbuncle uh, or carbo coal by Latin language, uh, yes, translate carbo coal. Uh, why uh, I will understood later. So, uh, what about this disease? In this pathological condition for inflammation will go not one hair follicle, it can be many hair follicles which will be in one region, yes? So many hair follicles which will go in one or lie in one place and all of them, all of them will plus for inflammation process. It means that pathological inflammation will took this region, this region, this region, and this region. It means that not only hair follicle go for pathological process, but connective tissue which lies around of these follicles also. And now you see that all these region will took by inflammation. And in this situation, this place have nodule, this place have nodule, this place have nodule, this place have nodule. But uh, because uh, uh, hair follicles located to each other very close, nodule also will plus. And in this situation, you will not see clean nodule, yes? Uh, you will see the big inflammation infiltrate. So it will be one big inflammation infiltrate with pus. 
So uh, when this uh, carbuncle will wrap in each of these nodule will go pass. Sometimes pass can have uh, yellow or even green color. Of course, uh, the connective tissues which will located in this region also will die. Yes, they will don't have any uh, nutrition and in this situation uh, it will be dead necrotic uh, tissues which will have the uh, which will have the black color. That's why carbo coal black colorish thing. So uh, in carbuncle situation, uh, secondary lesion also can be ulcer, yes, and uh, secondary lesion also will be scar because when all these process will be treated in this place, you will see big big scar formation. Uh, carbuncle also have the lovely location. It means that mostly this type of staphylo staphylococcus infection you will see in occipital region of a uh, patient or on his backside. So this localization should be like a keywords for you. Uh, you should uh, remember that if uh, big nodules with ulcers present in occipital region or in backside, yes, first of all, or first diagnosis about which you should thinking should be carbuncle. Uh, so, I hope uh, this information is understandable for you. Of course, carbuncle also should first of all treated by surgery doctor because if uh, you see the necrotic tissues, yes, only surgery can uh, cut these necrotic tissues, evacuate pass, put drainage and uh, took or give for the patient another treatment. And last disease which you can see in staphylococcus infection Okay, and the last disease from Staphylococcus uh, group of infection, uh, it is hydrodenitis. In real situation, hydrodenitis, it is very interesting disease because uh, only in one, uh, only in this disease, pathological process will located not at the hair follicle, but at the apocrine sweat glands, which located at the big skin folders of our body. So it means that uh, hydrodenitis have the lovely location, mostly it will located at the big uh, skin folders this of uh, patient body, I mean axillary region, uh, groin region, and etc. So, um, what happened in hydrodenitis? In hydrodenitis, it will be the situation when uh, bacteria which will locate it. Uh, in uh, hair follicle, yes, uh, non-pathogenic staphylococcus, uh, slowly with some liquid will go for apocrine sweat glands. Uh, yes, and if patient have decline of his immune system or other factors, yes, in this situation, this staphylococcus start their pathological grow in this place, in sweat glands of the patient. It means that in this situation, inflammation will take all gland and uh, connective tissues which will lease around of this uh, region. So, primary lesion for this patient also will be nodule. Yes, uh, because we tell that uh, apocrine sweat glands, it is also skin supplements or skin appendixes, which will uh, lead in uh, epidermis, dermis, and subcutaneous fat. That's why process also will be deep. Yes, when uh, this nodule will wrap, you will see a uh, white colorish pus or maybe yellow yellow white colorish pus we call sometimes it's this symptom like a creamy pus yes uh, because you know that uh, white color of um, epocrine glands uh, with products of bacteria will go away from this wound so that's why in this situation pus can have uh, yellow or white color so, uh, when this nodule uh, wrap, you will see ulcer like a secondary lesion. When this uh, ulcer go away, you will see also scar in this place. So, um, it means that in all type of deep staphylococcus infections, secondary lesion will be scar. I hope this information was understandable for you. Uh, if you have some questions, of course, we will discuss uh, it in our classes also. Uh, so, but uh, you also should understand that uh, this is only main diseases which you can see in your practice. Uh, in real situation, in uh, bacterial infection of the skin, we have... Uh, hundred type of uh, infections of problems but we discuss with you more often diseases which you will see in your practice
So a uh, few words about uh, treatment. What you should try to remember. Uh, in some book, English book, I see uh, the information that uh, if you see some pus formation in your baby face or another part of the patient body, yes, you should uh, wash this place with antibacterial soap. So, so please, uh, in this situation, I always understood for my students that this is wrong. Uh, you mustn't touch or wash place where present the past because when you will do it, yes, you will took it by your fingers, by your nails. And for example, when you will touch another part of your body, you will spread the infection for this place also. It means that when you touch or wash uh, the region where present uh, pustula, yes, or yellow colorish crust, you uh, transmit infection from the other parts of your body. So that's all. First rule to treatment of all bacterial infection of the skin, don't touch, don't wash, don't itch this region. Next, uh, what you should uh, do, uh, identify that process is superficial or deep. If process is superficial and uh, the region of pathological changes is small, you can treat this patient only with local treatment. What you should do? You can take the different type of antiseptic solution. Yes, in different countries you have different name of this solution. So uh, you take sterile cotton swab, put it for antiseptic solution and then put for the region where located this uh, small pustula. Uh, this procedure you, ca you can do uh, four or five times per day. After antiseptic solution, when uh, it will absorb, yes, you can take antibacterial ointment. Uh, also, we can we have different type of antibiotic ointment, uh, erythromycin tetra tetracycline. You took this uh, ointment also with sterile swab and slowly put for the place where located this pus formation. Uh, this procedure you also can do four or five times per day when antiseptic will absorb for the skin. Uh, uh, of course, and you should look for immune system of your patients. If he have decline of immune system or have another disease, you should uh, treat first of all the first disease. If a uh, process will be superficial and took the small part of the patient uh, body, this local treatment in many situations will help after five or seven days of using. But if you see that disease is spread for other parts of the patient body, in this situation, you should choose oral antibiotic drug. Yes, uh, it can be azithromycin drug with different dosage, which uh, depends from the weight of the patient. Yes, so uh, if if uh, your patient have deep type of bacterial infection, of course, first of all, you should decide for whom you should uh, send this patient. Maybe for surgery if process is big or located on the face, or uh, for dermatology doctor. But in this situation, of course, mostly this uh, patient should treated by the surgery. You will evacuate pus formation, uh, cut the nodule if he still not open. Yes. Uh, took all necrotic tissues, put drainage, antibiotic ointment, uh, but in situation of deep uh, bacterial infection, you should prescribe for your patient only uh, antibiotic drugs with injections. So it can be intravenous or intramuscle course of uh, injections, cephalosporine, uh, cephalosporine uh, ceftriaxone, cefazoline and other type of uh, internal injections. So, of course, uh, in this situation also treatment will be symptomatically because uh, you see that uh, pathological process took uh, big tissues. That's why your patient can have the high of the temperature and you will use the drugs which decline the temperature of the patient. Of course, uh, patient can feel the strong, strong pale pain in these places and you will use the drugs which will decline the pain uh, of this patient. And uh, what I want to tell at the end of my lecture, if patient have, have some bacterial infection of the skin, please send your patient for full checkup. Because in many situations, uh, some uh, pyodermas can be the first sign of uh, the big problem from your um, for, from your patient, especially uh, when we speak about diabetes mellitus. So if uh, you see the situation that 
patient, for example, have a foron pool and after treatment he will return for you with this problem again and again, of course, you should send your patient to check the uh, glucose level in his blood because it can be the first signs of diabetes mellitus. Okay, I hope that uh, this lecture was informative for you. I hope that I uh, help you understand some parts of bacterial infection. And of course, uh, I should tell that this is uh, not first, but second experience from the video lecture for me. Uh, I know that uh, my English is not the perfect. I have some mistake, uh, maybe grammar, <laughs> uh, maybe in the spelling of the word, but um, I also learn and try to uh, prepare my lectures uh, more better for you. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. See you in next class.